Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 15th of September, and it's World Afro Day. And a big happy birthday to Prince Harry, Tom Hardy, Tommy Lee Jones, and Jimmy Carr. Thousands of mourners flooded the streets of London on Wednesday to pay homage to Queen Elizabeth II as she made her final journey from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Hall, where she'll lie in state for four days ahead of Monday's state funeral. Her Majesty's coffin was pulled on a gun carriage and draped with the royal standard. Behind, the newly proclaimed King Charles III led the procession, followed by his three siblings and other senior members of the royal family. As the coffin arrived at Westminster Palace, onlookers were serenaded by the choirs of Westminster Abbey and St James's Palace. The coffin was then carried to Westminster Hall and placed on a wooden pedestal where a short service led by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, began. He opened proceedings with a prayer. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Following the service, members of the public were invited to enter the hall to pay their respects at the Queen's coffin, with queues to attend the lying-in state stretching three miles long. Following July's 40-year high, UK inflation rate made a surprise drop in August, falling from 10.1% to 9.9%, according to Office for National Statistics data published on Wednesday. It's the first decline in nearly a year and thought to be caused by the sharp fall in petrol prices seen over the past month. But with the cost of household necessities continuing to rise, Jajit Chadhar, director of the National Institute of Economic and Social Research, says times will remain tough for many. Even if there is some comfort from the fact it hasn't increased, the point is that this level of inflation is creating some very difficult times for many people. It comes in the midst of a growing energy crisis and despite the government's energy price guarantee, which is set to take place from October, Simon French, chief economist at Panmure Gordon, says we're not out of the woods yet. What the energy price guarantee does is it reduces the squeeze on household income and therefore households are going to be able to spend more on discretionary items, which will start to fuel inflation in other parts of the economy. So it is a little bit like squeezing a balloon. Wednesday saw Ukraine's President Zelensky make a rare trip outside Kyiv to attend a flag-raising ceremony in the reclaimed city of Izium. Russian troops were forced to retreat from the city last week following a surprise Ukrainian counter-attack, which saw them recapture significant amounts of land in the country's northeastern Kharkiv region. And as President Zelensky celebrated his troops' achievement, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, emphasised Europe's ongoing support for Ukraine in her annual State of the Union address. And I stand here with a conviction that with the necessary courage and with the necessary solidarity, Putin will fail and Ukraine and Europe will prevail. Meanwhile, Russian missiles struck a dam in the city of Krivi Ri, President Zelensky's hometown, and thousands of residents have been evacuated as the streets start to flood. However, British Air Marshal Edward Stringer is still predicting that the conflict in Ukraine could be over by Christmas and leaving some words of warning for the West. But it is possible now that there could be, could be uh, a collapse in the Russian armed forces. And I think the West should think very strongly now about what the world looks like uh, post-Putin. Mike Lindell, a.k.a. the My Pillow Guy and a major proponent of Donald Trump's stolen election conspiracy, says his phone was seized by the FBI when he was visiting a fast food outlet in Minnesota on Tuesday. He claims agents questioned him about his connection to Tina Peters. She's a former Colorado clerk who's facing criminal charges for tampering with election equipment and Lindell unsuccessfully campaigned for her in a Republican primary earlier this year. He gave an animated play-by-play account of how things allegedly went down on his internet show The Lindell Report on Wednesday. Wednesday, complete with a very relatable reason as to why he didn't want to hand over his device. He goes, uh, we're taking your cell phone. We have a warrant for your cell phone. I go, no, I said my whole company, I run five companies off that. I don't have a computer. My hearing aids run off this. Everything runs off my phone. Still to come on the Smart 7, a tough start for new Chelsea boss and Ryan Reynolds gets down and dirty for colon cancer. Right after this. 
Welcome back. There was more Champions League action on Wednesday night as Celtic drew one all with Shakhtar Donetsk in Poland, while Chelsea hosted Red Bull Salzburg and Man City had Borussia Dortmund at Main Road. After a shaky start from City, two late goals, including one from Borussia Dortmund old boy Erling Haaland, saw City win 2-1. New Chelsea manager Graham Potter probably didn't impress his new boss with a one-all draw with Red Bull Salzburg, a result that leaves Chelsea at the bottom of their group and facing must-win home and away visits from Italian giants AC Milan. Potter was trying to take the positives from the performance. Scored a good goal, probably lost a little bit in the second period of the second half but responded well again. Their keepers made some good saves. So overall, disappointed with the result but boys gave everything, just not wasn't quite to be today. The undisputed tennis goat Serena Williams made an appearance on Jimmy Fallon this week to talk about life since her retirement from the sport. The 23-time Grand Slam champion called it quits on her professional career, which spanned almost three decades after bowing out at the third round of the US Open earlier this month. She'd cited wanting to spend more time with her family and pursuing business ventures as factors in her decision, and while she may have hung up her racket, it seems she's certainly not done yet. I just feel like I'm at an age where I definitely have a lot more to give, and there's a lot more that I want to do, and so I'm not going to be relaxing. There's so much more for me, and I feel it's more of like an evolution of Serena. Hollywood star and 5th Division football club owner Ryan Reynolds took social media by storm on Wednesday after posting a video of himself undergoing a colonoscopy to raise awareness of colon cancer. In the seven-minute long video, Ryan explains that he decided to broadcast the procedure after losing a bet to fellow actor and Wrexham AFC co-chairman Rob McElhenney. The pair worked alongside campaigning group Lead From Behind to document their experience. I would never normally have any medical procedure put on camera and then shared. Morning. It's not every day that you can raise awareness about something that will most definitely save lives. Going in. Going in. That's enough motivation for me to let you in on a camera being shut down. This has been the Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dog.